Okay, we're doing a little we're doing a little quickie thing with uh, Vinny Caggiano, uh because I just saw a movie that had uh, the Terrega Recuerdos de mi Alhambra that uh, Segovia made famous. Well, Terrega made famous, I guess first. And Vinny is listening to it and uh, uh, helping out with some, I guess, some theory. And we're going to look at, at if I can find it, we're going to look at. Uh, at a note, note to note thing that I can't quite vocally get. And yeah, here we go. All right. So yeah, I, I, you know, in a context like this, I can talk about theory and I can talk about expression, but I cannot talk about technique because I do not have right hand classical technique. Okay. However, in the left hand, you know, I could see, I could get a picture of what's going on, like where the chords are changing sure. and whatnot, and you know, what kind of inversions he's using. But the question was, I mean. Um, Maybe we should give a listen to that little change. Sure. Let's, let's give a, a listen to this piece for a little bit and see what we got. Play. Right now we're in A minor. Now we're up to C major. E7 suspended E7. Okay. And this is um, it's an A diminished seven to a D minor. That A diminished seven functions diminished seventh and augmented chords function like dominant seven chords. Okay. Okay. This um, all right. Just as E7 is the 5 7, 5 steps away from me is the 5 7 of A minor, what happens a lot in this kind of music is then you change this A minor to an A7, and then it will resolve to the D minor chord, which is part of the key. The D minor okay. is part of the key. But to get a little more spice, you do a diminished 7. So instead of this, you get. Okay. And that adds a little that flat nine note. Is that something that it might you might say it it might be uh, sort of specific to say Spanish composers that sort of thing and modern Spanish composers? Uh, the diminished seventh, the use of that diminished seventh, mm -hmm. like in that way. Yeah. Uh, actually, no. Uh, I no? mean, you can hear it in Beatles. Uh, you know, George Harrison okay. used it in My Sweet Lord. Oh, you okay. Know. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, uh, just a quick note about diminished sevenths, because I always find this so fascinating. A diminished seventh is a magical little chord. If I took a D chord and moved it around the neck, I, the letter name would change of it. it. In other words, over here it's D, but over here it's F major, and here it's G major. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, if I want a bunch of Gs, I have to change. I have to transform the the actual fingering, so I get you know, uh, I mean D. So I get D, D, and D. Every fingering is different. With a diminished seventh chord, I go every step and a half, and that chord has the same name, and I don't have to change the fingering. And it's something that's been used in movies and cartoons and all yeah. those things all the time. Uh, in the in really old silent movie days, this was a cliche. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you use that now, people would like, you know, it's, it's, it's tacky now. <laughs> yeah. And also they use it like for laughter. Oh, sure. You know, back in those old days when they were doing that sort of thing, you know. <laughs> but the diminished seventh, um, oddly, uh, the thing is, uh, you know, uh, this is like a symmetrical chord, meaning that all the distance between the notes are exactly the same. From the first note to the next note, it's a step and a half. From this note to its next note, it's a step and a half. And from this note to this note, it's a step and a half. And back to the root, which means, actually, I use the word root, but there is no root. When you have symmetry in music, what happens is root gets becomes too vague to, to nail down. All right, so this chord has four names: E diminished seven, B flat diminished seven, uh, C sharp diminished seven, or G diminished seven, and it has the same four names if I move it here, here, and here, because it contains the same exact four notes in a different shuffle. Really? Yeah. Here, I'll show you. E B. Let's remember these, okay? E B flat, C sharp, G. All right. Now I go up here. Here's E, B flat, C sharp, G, in a different order, but okay, they're there. Okay, right. Um, e, right, mm -hmm. B flat, C sharp, G. And go up again, 
and I get E right here, B mm -hmm. flat here, C sharp, and G. Yeah. All right, different order, but same four notes. It's very unusual. If I took a D chord and did that, I get A, D, F sharp, and here I get C, F, A. You know, okay. only one common note. So, it's very interesting. interesting. A very interesting yeah. little. So again, this diminished seventh is substituting instead for A7. Right. All right. And the odd thing is, it doesn't have an A in it. All right. It has a B flat. So okay. you'd have to call it either an E diminished seven, a B flat diminished seven, a C sharp diminished seven, okay. or a G diminished seven. Okay. Unless you put an A in the bass. Oh, okay. And then you get a really dissonant chord. It's a, that's an A7 flat nine. Okay. All right. All right, so this is F7, what they know, what's known in classical music as a Neapolitan sixth. God, it's a beautiful sound. It's lovely. Did you F now? Seven, and then we get to D minor. F seven to an E minor. What? E seven. E seven. All right. Now we come to A major. So this is where we were really going to talk about this. And I'm sure you could find a number of videos where I talk about this, but mm -hmm. we'll, we'll really encapsulate this and study the idea because it okay. really works well in songwriting. And I'm going to give you an example of a Beatles song that does exactly what this does. Okay. Okay. Um, so, now in the key of C, all right, there are six usable resting chords. C, D minor, E minor, F, G, G7, either one, and A minor, all right. Now, the relationship between C and A minor is like C, A minor is kind of like the little sister to C major. Okay. It's called the relative minor. Okay. And, and how you find it is you go up six steps to find its root. In other words, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La. Right there is the A note, and that's where the A relative minor of C major is. Okay. If you did the chord family template for a guitar, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, and there's my A minor. The sixth step is the relative minor key. All right, so what this is doing, it's kind of uh, I, I forget what the changes are now, but um, eventually it goes up to the C major. Oh, well, let's go back a little. We'll, I'll, again, we'll talk about it. So we're in A minor. Now, all right, so that goes right to C major immediately. Mm -hmm. And you could, it feels like that too. It feels very major, all right? Mm -hmm. But the thing about when you're staying within the key of C a slash A minor, all right, two different roots, is um, there's not, it's not going to have a shocking result. It's going to have a very smooth. Oh, okay. You notice how easily it flows yeah. into that C Yeah, chord, it flows, yeah. You know? So we have that. So we have C major, A minor, and really the the... The dominant key of the song is A minor rather than C major, but that's okay. When you start with A minor and you look at C major, sometimes you'll call this a relative major, and that's what we're going to do. This is A minor, okay. and C is its relative major, all from the same key. Now later on, we get this. All right? Mm -hmm. Now that's a little more dramatic, and the reason why is this is what's called the parallel minor. Uh, okay. Parallel major. Okay. Parallel major. Okay. So again, we have A minor. Its relative major is C major. Right. We have A minor. Its parallel major is A major. Major. All right. Uh, now we have three sharps all of a sudden. This is much more of a change to the ear than the A minor to C. Indeed it is. Yeah. Indeed it is. All okay. right. 
Uh, and so parallel simply means what they mean in classical uh, theory when they say parallel major or parallel minor is when you're moving from the major to the minor, you maintain the same root. All right. So in the case of uh, A minor to its relative major C, the root changes from A to C. Okay. But when we go parallel mi major, A minor goes to A major, so it has the same root, A A. Okay. A in both. And it has a lovely, you know, minor keys, you know, they're sad and somber, so it has this kind of dawning effect, you know, when you, when you go to the parallel major, it's like, ah, you know, oh, the sun's shining now, which I know you don't like that, but you like more cloudy weather, but... Oh, um, yeah, but no, in music, I like that. <laughs> yeah, just in real weather. Yeah. Yeah, okay, sure. All right, does that, uh, does that kind of make some sense there? Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, I, I'm trying to remember... I'm trying to remember. Actually, we can we can cut off right now because I'm just trying to remember that one thing. Okay. okay. All right. So that's Vinny. Uh, we've had a, sort of a little mini class via uh, Torrega's Recuerdos de mi Alhambra. Oh, do you want to see the Beatles example, by the way? Oh yes. Doing yes. the same exact thing where we have a song that goes to relative major. Okay. And it also also goes to parallel major. Oh, okay. And uh, actually, I've. Uh, I've, I've done this before, you know, uh, and in fact the Venice Roasters do this song. This is, um, uh, what the hell, Things We Said Today. Okay. Right? So uh, here we have a natural minor, A minor, D minor. Now we go to... Uh, relative major, C major there, mm -hmm. okay. Here they do a little shift, to, a quick shift to F, don't, don't worry about that, um, and there's some spicy chords otherwise too, but the idea here is we're going from the minor key to the relative major key. Now um, I'm not going to follow form, I'm going to go now to where it goes to parallel major. And then they go blues with it. All right. Mm -hmm. Does the same exact thing. It's going from minor to relative major, minor to parallel major. Okay. All right. Except in the Beatles example, it's not just major, but they it, they make it dominant, so it's more bluesy sounding. Okay. All right. Another trick that's done, by the way, is you don't have to be permanently in the key of A major when that happens. All right. Let's let's. I'm going to compose a piece of music. Right. I'm in A minor. Now I, my A took me to D minor, which is still in the key of A minor. So this A became a passing chord. Okay. All right. I came back to my key. This is acting dominant to to go to D minor. Okay. So there are two approaches. One is you can create a whole modulated section that's in the key of. Let's say we did it otherwise. Now we're totally in A major, but okay. we could go to A minor from that. <laughs> sure. A minor, the key of A, a harmonic and melodic minor, and A major share the same dominant seventh chord. So I can relax to A minor, or I can relax to A major. Okay. All right. Why, during the, the first part of the Beatles thing, was I thinking of... What's the song? It's by the Hollies. Maybe it's Bus Stop. Bus Stop. It's similar. But that has a startling sort of uh, up to a, to a major. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 every, all summer long or whatever. In that section, is that right? Yeah. Things we said today. Same chords. Yeah, that, the reason why that's so startling is not because of the C, but what comes right after it. Yeah. Because that B7 is taking us to E minor. We were in A minor. Okay. B7 is the 5-7. I'm quite insane someday, uh, name and all. Yeah, okay. 
Okay. And and what they do is it goes from A minor to E minor. Now bear in mind, let's let's look at the rel the keys that both of these chords are are relative to. Mm -hmm. A minor is relative to C major. Okay. E minor is relative to G major. These mm -hmm. are the two keys that are plotted here. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between C major and G major? One note, F sharp. Oh, is that right? Right. Okay. You do a C scale, it's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. You do a G scale, it's G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. So it has six notes in common, seven notes, in, six notes in common with C. Okay. So they're very closely related keys, right? So what happens is, even though that B7 is dramatic and it takes us to E minor, you'd think it'd be a dramatic, you know, way back to get to A minor. But what they do is they don't even use a dominant to get to A minor. They just go there from the E minor. Okay. And notice how smoothly it flows, like, um, uh, to the A minor, it doesn't, it's not like shocking. It, it just goes there. Okay. And also, see, this is the thing about minor keys. There are so many variables that, that occur. If I was an A natural minor, which means there is no such thing as a, a dominant chord in it, E minor is natural to the key of, the E minor chord is natural to the key of A minor itself. So even though we were in the key of E minor, it can serve as a very subtle, not overwhelming five five chord going to the one chord, okay. if that makes any sense. Yeah. It's minor, it's not dominant. So, as opposed to, okay. you know, maybe I'm adding too much detail here, I don't know, but... Uh, no, it's been, it's been interesting. I, yeah, that's, uh, no, you've, you've gone over, you know, relative and parallel before, but it it always helps to have a brush up. On that yeah, stuff, yeah, so. absolutely, and and it's great to see it in in such w widely varied music. You know, mm -hmm. you mentioned the Hollies, the Beatles, and now and you know a, a classical piece of music. So, well, if if this actually goes up on anything, uh, if you've never listened to Recuerdos de mi Alhambra, you can find several different versions on YouTube. You can even just put in require those and it will find them. Yeah. So. And he plays it outdoors in the snow and it's amazing. <laughs> it's just remarkable. It's He's remarkably smooth. What's this guy's name? He's a uh, Enno Vorhorst. Oh, he's probably one of those German guys there. You know, they just put their fingers to the grindstone until yeah. they get it. And then yeah. the, yeah. the Fuhrer applauds. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Well. All right. So.